Spanning the first seven chapters of the greatest story ever told, the series begins with the pirate king, Goldie Roger, who at his execution platform, in front of a massive crowd at a location we will later come to know as Logtown, issued a challenge to all the dreamers of the world to look for his treasure he left at sea, the One Piece. It is a perfect single-page introduction to the journey which we, the readers, and our main characters are about to embark on. Roger advises to search the entire world, giving Oda a lot of room to create an incredibly detailed world, whilst also introducing the overarching plot. This is One Piece, and this is an adventure. Hello, my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and from today, we are going to embark on our own adventure reviewing One Piece arcs. Starting from the beginning, here is Joy Girl's review of Romance Dawn. Immediately following Roger's execution, we are introduced to the story's main protagonist and the figure who will be our guide to take us on our journey in the vast world. Monkey D. Luffy is a curious child who comes from a small harbor village which fits perfectly with the idea of world building, as Luffy, a free-spirited character whose curiosity is sure to result in epic adventures. Luffy's reckless determination is established from the very beginning, in fact, from his very first appearance, as he stabs himself in front of a group of pirates in an attempt to convince them to take him on their next voyage by proving his toughness. From here, we are introduced to Redhead Shanks, the captain of the pirate crew and a character who is extremely important to the formation of Luffy as a character, his dreams and ideals. We see Luffy learning to only fight for something important when Shanks refuses to fight Higuma, a mountain bandit who insults the pirate captain, with Shanks only choosing to defeat Higuma's group of bandits later when Luffy's life is in danger. And from this, Luffy develops another trait, his determination to protect his friends when Shanks jumps in without hesitation to save Luffy from a sea monster, sacrificing his arm in the process. When it's time for Shanks and his crew to finally leave, Luffy is no longer asking to be taken along with them on their journey, showing his character development, having now decided that he will embark on his own adventure, become his own captain, and even surpass Shanks and become the next Pirate King. Shanks acknowledges Luffy's declaration and bestows him with his straw hat, explaining it to mean a lot to him and requests that Luffy returns it once he too becomes a great pirate and they meet again at sea. And 10 years later, Luffy embarks on his journey, meeting again the sea monster who tore off Shanks' arm. This time, Luffy has no fear, nor difficulty, and launches an attack, the Gomu Gomu Pistol, making use of his Devil Fruit ability, which he unwittingly acquired back when he ate one of the redhead pirates' treasures, the Gomu Gomu no Mi, and thus clearing his way to make his voyage, signaling also his physical development of strength. The first chapter ends with we, the audience, also embarking on Luffy's journey, who declares once again that he will become the king of the pirates, but before doing so, to find himself 10 crewmates. And so the adventure begins. From chapter 2, we see more of Luffy's comically carefree antics as he makes a new friend in Kobe, a meek cabin boy on Pirate Alveda's ship who harbors dreams of becoming a marine. Displaying Luffy's development since his first introduction, we now see him influencing others as he inspires Kobe with his unwavering determination to pursue his dreams, to the extent of even risking death to do so. After defeating Alveda, Luffy along with Kobe makes his way to the nearby navy base where he heard there is a fearsome pirate hunter imprisoned with the intent of asking him to join his crew, provided he's a good guy. This simple line establishes Luffy's own pirate code which he lives by whilst fulfilling his dream to become a pirate king. First step in doing so, assemble a super crew, strong enough to tackle the Grand Line. Enter Roronoa Zoro, a pirate hunter who also lives by his own personal code. The swordsman impresses Luffy as well as the audience as we witness his upstanding morals having stood up to the marine captain Morgan's spoiled son, Helmeppo, to save a young, defenseless girl. Oda further builds up Zoro by introducing us to his fighting prowess as a skilled and unique three-sword-style swordsman, quickly making him a fan favorite, and indeed, one of the first reasons why I decided to commit to the series. We see a brief backstory for the Santoru swordsman and are introduced to his own dream, to become the strongest swordsman in the world so as to fulfill a promise that he made to his late friend slash rival. 
In order to achieve that dream, Zoro decides to discard his title and role as a pirate hunter, switching sides to join Luffy and become a pirate instead, when he finds out that the Navy never intended to honour their promise to free Zoro after surviving a month of being tied up without food. The brilliantly subtle character development is astounding as we understand that Zoro is a man of great strength, but also honour. Similar to Luffy, he is determined to achieve his dream and live out his life following a code of his own that meets his ideals and values. And in a great moment, the two declare their dreams to each other and a trust is formed between the captain and his first crewmate that both will one day achieve their respective dreams. With this, the journey of the Mugiwara crew begins. Both Luffy and Zoro are incredibly strong, both in their resolve and physical ability, which is contrasted to Kobe, who in turn, Oda sets up for a parallel journey in his own quest to become a marine, thus developing Kobe's character in his own right, something that the mangaka does brilliantly for all his side characters. Simultaneously, he provides insight into another of Luffy's character traits as an individual who possesses a unique charm to be able to attract others and make them his friend. Indeed, though their dreams will take them down different paths, perhaps making them future opponents, Luffy has made a lifelong friend in Kobe, who along with the rest of the Navy base, is thankful for Luffy's boldness in always doing the right thing and standing up to anyone who gets in his way from doing so. By the end of the arc, we have met two of our main characters, some other side characters who will remain important to the story, and also the different types of villains that our main characters will have to face in their journey. We have those who will challenge ideals and values, villainous pirates, those who despite being physically weak sit in high positions and abuse their power, and also the world government. And though not introduced in Romance Dawn in the manga version, Oda also hinted the first female main character in Nami who was featured in the first cover page alongside Luffy and Shanks, encouraging readers to keep going in order to meet this new character. In just seven chapters, the characters and the world of One Piece has been brilliantly set up. It's hard to be unimpressed by how the series themes have been established by only a few key timeless moments and scenes due to the dedicated nuance of Oda's storytelling. The tone is light and funny, and yet at the same time deals with important themes and ideas in a serious manner. Each time I go back to Romance Dawn, I pick up something new and my excitement for the coming adventure is renewed, making it one of the most brilliantly written arcs and an outstanding introduction for the greatest story ever told. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.